Hello everyone. Today I am going to discuss a very important topic which is commonly discussed with patients that is the labor analgesia. So we know that labor pains is one of the worst pains a female can ever experience in her lifetime. But with the modern medicines there is a good relief to the pain which is known as labor analgesia. So first of all what is the difference between anesthesia and analgesia? In simple words anesthesia is complete loss of pain. In analgesia the patient is somewhat 80% decrease of the pain. There is never 100% relief from pain. The patient will still get pain but it will be relieved up to 80%. Now what are the various options of labor analgesia? They can broadly be divided into medicines and non-medical things. Non-medical things are most commonly the psychological counseling of the patient in which the patient is motivated by some breathing exercises, by walking, some uh, you know hypnosis and even other exercises can be done. The second uh, non-pharmacological or non-medical method is by altering the pain sensations. A common example is a water labor in which basically a heat and cold sensations heat and cold pain sensations are given to the patient in mild form so that the labor pain attention is deviated. However, these things are not very commonly practiced and the effectiveness is also not relatively good. Now coming to the pharmacological methods. The pharmacological methods can be broadly divided into systemic and regional. Systemic that whole body will have that effect. The two common most beings the IV and the inhalational. The regional means only a certain group of nerves is blocked. Coming to the systemic one. Systemic one, the most common and the most safe which is now being practiced nowadays is the Entonox gas. Entonox gas is basically a 50% combination, 50% each combination of nitrous oxide and oxygen which is given to the patient during any stage of labor whenever she wants it by the mouthpiece or by a mask. It is very safe, very fast acting, very effective also. The main advantage is that it is very safe for the baby also. It does not have any side effects on the fetal perfusion or on the duration of the labor. Only mild side effects like excess of sedation can be there when excess of dose is given. And because it is a vaporized gas, it can also have a side effects on the paramedical staff who are attending the patient. The second systemic drug which is given are the IV opioids. Previously, the opioids were very uh, having a sedative effect on the mother and on the neonate breathing respiratory pattern also. But nowadays, a new drug which is called as Remifantanil has come, which is very effective and very fast also. It is eliminated very fast from the maternal uh, body, so it does not reach the baby and hence it is very safe also. Only thing is that it has to be given continuously. And also the advantage is that patient has a own controlled option which is known as controlled analgesia in which the pump is actually in the control of patient to increase or decrease the dose. The coming to the regional anesthesia, regional analgesia that is the epidural. In epidural, see example the difference between spinal anesthesia and epidural analgesia. In simple terms if you can understand there is three layers example 1, 2 and 3. So if you penetrate the one layer but not the second layer that is called as epidural so that there is a partial block but if you penetrate one and two both then it is spinal block in which it is a complete block. So epidural analgesia the advantage is that it can be converted to spinal at any time and the prerequisite for giving spinal analgesia is only that it should be given in only those centers where the facility of LSCS or cesarean section is available. Otherwise, epidural analgesia can be given in all females. It is very very safe for the mother as well as it does not cause any prolonged duration of the labor or any decreased blood supply to the fetus. In all these kind of analgesias which I have discussed, it is very very important to continuously monitor the patient vitals and fetal heart rate. Always and every moment with the patient who is taking analgesia, one attender must be there compulsory. Because sometimes if there is by chance any dose, overdose, the patient will immediately go for sedation or respiratory drowsiness. That can obviously uh, be a nightmare for the mother as well as for the baby. Otherwise, these analgesia, especially the epidural, hardly has any side effects. Sometimes hypotension, fever, shivering can happen which can be conservatively managed. 
a rare complication but sometimes is seen as the post dural puncture headache in which the patient will continuously have headache on sitting down and on lying down the headache is relieved uh, mostly these headaches are also mild and can be managed conservatively after the delivery it has been seen that baby usually is having no problem especially the respiratory drowsiness is not there the baby of these mothers can feed well also the breastfeeding is not an issue so the only important thing is that the patient must start discussing these analgesia options not during the delivery but right from the 6th or 7th month so that they are mentally prepared and they know exactly how which anesthesia or analgesia will suit them and during that labor pain they are very much comfortable in understanding all the side effects as well as the advantages of each analgesia for further details please contact your doctor thank you